Imagine standing on the moon's surface, peering into the endless void of space, feeling like you were standing on the edge of an abyss, and suddenly, your eyes witness Earth. Just look at this picture of Earth taken during the Apollo mission. The uncanniness of the structure of Earth lies in its being a round ball, and the thought that people are even living on the lower bottom of this colored ball increases my fear of the captivating mysteries in the deepest cosmos. Anyone walking in that country that is apparently upside down, as I can imagine looking at the picture of Earth from space, is walking on a straight path without even having a thought in mind that the person seeing them from space considers them hanging upside down. Imagining, understanding, and believing all these facts, coupled with my deep thoughts at night when I glimpse the shimmering stars in the sky and know that this beautiful view is just the beginning of the mysteries of the cosmos, is where my deepest fear, astrophobia, lies. Do any of you fear space? Add a comment right now and let me know what thoughts about space make you fear the most. And meanwhile, I'll explain mine. The thought of space with its uncanny structures, giant planets, and yet undiscoverable black regions sends shivers down my spine. However, I still can't help drawing towards it with even more powerful force, just like a moth to a flame. So, my fear begins when I start thinking about the planets in our solar system that we have already discovered. Planets. It feels as if I am looking at a mesmerizing cosmic carousel, where each celestial body has its own mysteries. It makes me feel like a dead man when I ponder on the fact that each of these planets is a whole world in itself, just like our Earth, but they are even vaster with undiscovered truths, and above all, they don't feel like home to me. The so-called Red Planet, or you may call it Mars, blows my mind with its rusty-hued surface with unbearable temperatures between 70 degrees and minus 225 degrees. I feel like there are ancient secrets buried under these red grounds, as even Carl Sagan, an American astronomer who spent his life researching extraterrestrial life, had the same thoughts as I do, and yet said, The surface of Mars is a place of great beauty and mystery, and we might still find evidence of life there. The swirling, colossal gas giant Jupiter, spread over 61.42 billion kilometers square area, shrinks my nerves when I ponder on the fact that the vast great red spot that's 16,350 kilometers wide on its surface is large enough to gallop Earth within a single bite that's only 40,075 kilometers. I feel like this planet can crush all of us and everyone you have ever known in your life existing on planet Earth. How? With its enormous gravity and sheer size. Just the moment I start focusing on the unparalleled beauty of Jupiter, the realization of its giantness gives me a feeling of an ominous grandeur waking up my astrophobia and, even worse, astromegalophobia. That's the fear of huge objects. Saturn, an emblematic symbol of space, stands proudly with its rings as if a crown is embedded with jewels. Still, I can't keep my trepidation when I imagine the extreme amounts of hydrogen, helium, ammonia, and water ice in the outer layer of Saturn. What if I step on Saturn? It would definitely kill me within seconds. My body wouldn't be able to bear the effects of these gases. Maybe that's why we often laugh at the idea of sending all the politicians to these planets in the center of darkness that has no end. They need to know how it feels when their wrong decisions and selfishness make us feel like we are standing nowhere. 
But these are the known planets, yet we have to find undiscovered planets in the darkness of space. My throat dries up when I hear news like NASA reveals the planet that can destroy the Earth, and I think exoplanets like Gliese 436b make my astrophobia even worse. Gliese 436b. It's just mind-wrenching for me to think that how come this considerable planet revolves at only 2.5 million miles away from its host star, when in our solar system even the closest planet revolves almost 36 million miles away from the Sun. Now, imagine the extreme gravity this host star has in it that has forced Gliese 436b to orbit with such a small distance. What if this host star of Gliese 436b comes near our solar system? I can't even close my eyes thinking about it. We might feel a sudden jerk if this host star pulled out our planet from the chains of the sun's gravity, making Earth revolve around itself. And that's only what I'm talking about within the observable universe. We cannot unsee what Lawrence Krauss has focused on, and that's in cosmic supper time. The most likely possibility is that our universe will expand forever. Our universe is constantly expanding by adding up multiple universes. It's insanely terrifying to even think and give a new face to my astrophobia to grow and let me fear even more. Yet sometimes shrinkage is even more frightening and mind-gobbling as compared to expansion because shrinkage has the power to eat and destroy everything. I can't withhold my astrophobia when melanoheliophobia show even a more clear path to it. The fear of black holes. Yes, I know this has just hit your mind too. Because even if I were a person who isn't agoraphobic, I would still fear black holes. These gluttonous beasts don't even let the light come out of them. I can't even imagine the massively strong gravitational pull standing near Sagittarius A, a supermassive black hole at the heart of our galaxy, the Milky Way. Sagittarius A. I couldn't stop shivering with the creepy thought that this hugely insane body that's four million times more massive than the sun can enjoy our planet Earth as its lunch until I found out that it's luckily 26,000 light years away from Earth. But it still exists with 100 million more black holes in our apparently tiny Milky Way galaxy. I can imagine the cold breeze that went through the bodies of the scientists who took the first image of a black hole in 2019 at the heart of the M87 galaxy, which is almost 55 million light years from Earth. Still, that wasn't the biggest black hole. Tun 618 The biggest black hole we've known until now is the Tun 618, to imagine how huge it is, I compared it with the size of the sun, and you won't believe your ears. It is 66 billion times larger than the sun. It fueled my fear as we've always considered the sun as a huge planet. But you know what's even more mouth-opening? All that Jupiter and Saturn that we talked about at the very beginning of this video are contained in a huge solar system, and this Tun 618 can contain almost 11 solar systems of the same size. Well, the more I think about the wonders of space, the more my astrophobia haunts me. The thought of leaving the relative safety of Earth and floating off into nothing horrifies me. The deep, dark sea voids and terrifies and makes my intestines shriek louder. And that's exactly what William Shatner felt like. Instead of being amazed at the beauty of space and our planet Earth, when he saw Earth, he said it felt like seeing a funeral. 
If your astrophobia is just hyped up by all the things we've just talked about, I'm sure you have not seen this sparkling image that seems like gems floating in the air. If you think they're stars, then you are wrong because these are the galaxies. Our Milky Way galaxy alone is 100 million light years across. So imagine how huge is the expansion of this image in reality. If you plan to have an adventurous trip around these galaxies, then I'm afraid that you might not even be able to cross the Milky Way galaxy and reach to its end. Each of these galaxies can contain millions and trillions of stars and even solar systems with lots of planets. And maybe there is life on those planets. This adds to my astrophobia when I think of what will happen if suddenly all of the gravitational force vanishes away while I am standing in an unknown center of space. I will start falling without an end to this fall. Yet I may hit countless asteroids during my fall and it will crush even my brains out of my skull. Asteroids. Asteroids are planetary bodies that are not huge enough, yet they are one of the bodies from space that can affect us even if we are sitting in our homes. NASA reveals once in a year an asteroid large enough to threaten the Earth's civilization comes along. However, we have yet been fortunate that none of them has ever touched us to a highly damaging level. If you are wondering how huge the asteroids are, then you only need to know that any rocky meteoroid that is larger than 25 meters can cause havoc at a local place on Earth where it will hit. As I moved on to explore my astrophobia, I had the biggest realization that in space, time and distance are relative, which causes the laws of physics to be tested to their extreme limits. It's not only the celestial and planetary bodies that give way to my fear of space. The concept of zero gravity is even more strange for me. Zero gravity. It puts me into deep thought when I consider the Apollo mission with its floating and fragile spacecraft and astronauts in a world of zero gravity how alien they might have felt about their environment while experiencing zero gravity. Actually, it mirrors my own internal fears of space that I'm trying to see in those astronauts. The thought that laws of physics start changing as we go deeper and deeper into space challenges my understanding and knowledge about space, adding to the depth of my fear. Ending up this video, I would say that it feels like astrophobia adds up to my information because the more I fear, the more I try to have a self-discovery of space. And I feel like my situation somehow symbolizes the brave astronauts of the Apollo mission. Just like those astronauts faced their fear by traveling deeper into space in reality in the same way my discoveries and hunting for information about space lets me deal with my astrophobia in a better way. Let me know in the comments below if this video has helped you to relieve yourself a bit from the astrophobia or if it has added more to it.